It was the height of the Cold War, and Soviet submarine engineering had been carefully honed to produce robust and fast vessels that could take much more damage and dive substantially deeper than their American counterparts. Even so, the US had stealthier submarines that were slower and with less firepower, but they could theoretically ambush the noisy Soviet ships and sink them before they could use their numerous advantages in battle. As such, the Americans were confident that stealth beat firepower and speed, but they were in for a nasty surprise. In the mid-1980s, the Soviet Navy launched its Akula-class nuclear-powered attack submarines. The technology was far beyond what the U.S. expected the Soviets could accomplish, and even defense analyst Norman Palmer affirmed that the breakthrough, quote, shook everyone in the West up. The submarines were incredibly fast, lethal, and resilient, but now had something else to their advantage. They were silent as a tomb. Suddenly, the U.S. Navy learned to fear the might of the new Akula-class powerhouse, a revolutionary new asset in the Soviet Union's arsenal of destruction. Underwater Tank The Akula-class submarine was envisioned as a replacement for the Soviet Sierra-class submarine, which had been in service since the 1970s. The Soviet submarine design had historically focused on hull resistance and depth capabilities. In contrast, the West decided to make its submarines as quiet as possible. The Sierra submarine was reinforced with a titanium hull, making the craft lighter and capable of diving beyond 1,800 feet below the surface. The diving depth gave the Sierra a considerable advantage over its American counterparts. Additionally, the titanium structure allowed the submarine to withstand additional damage from enemy torpedoes. With up to four 530mm torpedo tubes and speeds of up to 34 knots, the Sierra was a formidable submarine that was faster, more destructive, and more resilient than every NATO submersible at the time. But the advantages came at a steep price and the titanium hull was very costly and challenging to produce. With the depleted Soviet naval industry struggling to keep up with mass-produced warships, the Sierra-class submarines would never be built in significant numbers. To make matters worse, despite the numerous features of the Sierra vessels, they had a significant flaw. They were considerably noisier than the Western submarines used by NATO, making them much easier to spot and take down. But even as the Soviet ships were faster, stronger, and more powerful than almost any other submarine at the time. U.S. intelligence officials were reasonably confident that their many features would be of little use in an actual combat scenario. Furthermore, they projected that the silent American submarines would be able to spot the Soviet vessels sooner and attack before they could even use their speed and superior firepower. In light of the high costs and the vulnerability they faced against enemy submarines, the Soviets began developing a new kind of submersible vessel in the late 1970s, one with similar advantages as the Sierra class, but able to operate as silently as Western submarines. Spy Games The designs for what would become the Akula class submarine began as early as 1976. The specifications were almost identical to those of the titanium-reinforced Sierra class, but this time the hull would be made of steel. The decision would make the technology much more affordable and easier to produce in massive numbers. During the following years, 15 Akula-class submarines were produced by the Soviet Union. The first five units mainly behaved as previous Soviet submersibles, and their noise levels were still much more significant than those generated by their American counterparts. Nevertheless, after the fifth unit, the Soviet Union began a series of drastic interventions to the original design, increasing the length of the hull by over four meters. The upgrades were achieved thanks to a group of Soviet spies that infiltrated the U.S. Navy and stole many of the secrets that made American submarines so silent. U.S. Navy officer John Walker and U.S. Navy radio man Jerry Whitworth were crucial in informing the Soviets of how advanced U.S. technology really was. The spies extracted specific information on American sonar technology and their network of hydrophones 
that revealed precisely how the Americans were identifying their submarines and what noise signatures were giving them away. Consequently, the Soviets became aware that the U.S. Navy was tracking its submarines thanks to the cavitation produced by the propellers. Thus, the Soviet Union cut a deal with the Japanese Toshiba Corporation and the Norwegian Kongsberg firm and began buying foreign propellers that produced much less noise than its own technology. After finally discovering the reason why the Soviet submarines produced much more noise than the American ones, the Soviets had every single piece of the puzzle to create the ultimate underwater hunter. A New Generation Submarine The Akula submarines were designed with a double hull structure, giving the crew increased survivability and the exterior a much more streamlined look. The vessel was powered by a single OK-650M VM5 pressurized nuclear reactor, allowing her to remain underwater for as long as food supplies would last. The energy produced by the nuclear generator was used to heat four steam generators that powered a 50,000 horsepower steam engine connected to the seven-bladed fixed-pitch propeller on the outside of the hull. With her nuclear reactor powering the vessel continuously, the operational time window of an Akula submarine is only restrained by the supplies she carries and the need for maintenance. The Akula-class submarine has enough supplies to operate underwater for up to 100 days. Despite not having a titanium hull like her predecessor, the Akula's double hull gives her a significant advantage regarding resilience to attack. The outer hull is separated from the inner hull by a considerable distance, which means that even if the outer layer is damaged, the submarine has a significant chance to remain functional, even when another submarine with a single hull configuration is out of action. The vessel is also considerably large, especially compared to Western standards, and she requires a crew of over 70 seamen to operate correctly. The later version of the Akula achieved formidable noise reduction, which reached and even surpassed that of American vessels. This advantage was mainly obtained thanks to the new propellers mounted on the submarine and the inclusion of vibration isolation equipment for the powertrain, anechoic tiles, and the installation of shock absorbers in every compartment, including the engine room. Continuing the tradition of their predecessor, the new Akula-class ships retained devastating firepower capabilities and impressive speeds. The submarine was armed with eight torpedo tubes, four of 533 millimeters, and the other four capable of launching 650 millimeter projectiles. Additionally, the vessel was armed with air defense missiles and anti-ship torpedoes. Considering the new understanding of American submarine stealth and the several modifications done to the newer Akula submarines, the result was a mighty silent hunter, able to surpass most American vessels while remaining as silent as the improved Los Angeles-class submarine. Operational Career The introduction of the new submarine took the West by storm. When intelligence reports of the Akula reached the United States, the entire perspective on Soviet naval power suddenly shifted. From being predictable and vulnerable to NATO submarines, the new vessels became a dreadful threat to America and its allies. The Akula-class submarines were immediately deployed, mainly to the Pacific. They became the Soviet submarines to travel the closest to America, as their stealth features made them ideal candidates for high-stakes covert missions. The submarines were also tasked with identifying and tracking American submarines and detecting the possible launching of U.S. intercontinental ballistic missiles. But despite finally gaining an essential advantage over their foes, the Soviets were never able to test the Akula in combat against U.S. submarines. By the early 90s, the Soviet Union imploded and collapsed, and the threat of a nuclear Armageddon significantly diminished. Nevertheless, the newly established Russian Federation continued to use the 10 Akula-class submarines that had been improved with stealth systems. Soon, they were again deployed to spy and track U.S. activities on the high seas. Over the years, there have been several reports and sightings of Akula submarines operating close to U.S. coasts. Two of them were reported in 2009, with the U.S. Navy managing to track one while admitting the other had escaped its grasp. In 2012, 
U.S. intelligence revealed that they knew of an Akula-class submarine operation in the Gulf of Mexico. However, its exact location and mission parameters were unknown. Meanwhile, one of the vessels was recently leased to India for training as the nation prepares to launch its nuclear submarine program. The Indian crew revealed that the submarine they acquired from Russia showcased several mechanical flaws and maintenance issues. This revealing fact had so far remained hidden by the secretive Russian Navy. To this day, the Akula-class submarine remains in service with the Russian Navy, and until the introduction of the Asen-class submarine in 2013, she was the most capable Russian submarine in the world. Thank you for watching Dark Seas. Don't hesitate to click on your screen to explore our other Dark Documentaries channels, where you'll find more about modern warfare and unique technology. Also, click on the bell icon to be notified of our newest content, which we publish regularly. And stay tuned for more.